My name is Fred Cook, and I drive school bus. My name is Leanne Murchie, and I'm a school bus driver for TCAPS. It's been a very wonderful experience. When I first hired in, one of the previous bus drivers told me that this particular job, driving school bus, is the best job on earth. So I immediately took to it, uh, and uh, I have to agree that this is one of the best jobs that anyone can do. What prompted me in the very beginning, I have a college degree, and she said, you're in the safest vehicle in the world, on the road. So I thought, well, you know, I'm going to try. It's Because I would be on the same time schedule as my own children. And when they were off, I was off. When holidays, I was, you know, I was there. So it was the best of both worlds. TCAPS offers jobs with elsewhere within the, the system. Between routes, I used to, for 12, 13 years, I did lunch duty over at East Middle School, and now I paint. They're real good about finding people the hours that they need during the course of the day to make the job great. We have Mesa Insurance. The whole district has it. It's awesome. It's the best health insurance. We offer a 401k. There's a sign-on bonus. It's a win-win situation. The most important thing, I think, coming to work at TCAPS is you understand it is it, you understand that you are a part of a team. It's a part of a collective. You know, it's not just bus drivers and then versus teachers. It's not that. We all are in, in this thing called uh, education together. If, if a person likes kids, generally likes kids, um, this is a perfect job. So I'm talking to kids all day uh, and that experience uh, is really heartwarming, and uh, well, I continue to understand how what it means to uh, be a part of the community. You are an educator. You have a chance to touch children's lives every day, and don't don't think that you don't. You are such an important part of the wheel of education. Welcome to the audience and thank you for attending. The viewers may watch Board of Education meetings and Board Committee meetings live on TV 190 or online at tcaps.net backslash board. Recorded meetings may be viewed on demand at the same address. Um, Kent or Stacy, is that public comment? No public comment. All right. Um, then moving on to the next item, procedural item, draft committee minute uh, meeting minutes from April 27th. Is there any changes? No changes for me. Nope. All right, hearing no changes, remains posted. Next uh, item is a uh, board policy review, review deferring to Connie Taylor. Yeah, so we have one that we're bringing to you that would be on the consent agenda. It's a revised policy referencing um, policy 5113, that's the interdistrict open enrollment, also known as schools of choice. Um, as you'll recall, last, um, last month the board approved the revised re resolution with 
um, Northwest Ed for the participation in the Schools of Choice program. And then our policy needed to align with the changes in that resolution. And so we did some, uh, some revisions, actually pretty small. Um, you'll notice on there it does reference administrative guidelines, which is a strike through. There are no corresponding administrative guidelines, so we did not want that to be confusing. Um, and then there's also language referencing transportation. Um, it's just an omission, I think, on the previous policy that while there is not uh, transportation for schools of choice participants, if it is identified in the IEP, then the transportation would be provided accordingly. Um, and then there's also additional language referencing um, no discrimination based on genetic information, and that just corresponds with a provision of the law. It's called GINA. So again, I think that was just a previous omission from the policy that should have been there in the non-discriminatory. Otherwise, um, pretty straightforward and just bringing that uh, as a revised policy for the consent agenda. All right. Any questions? I do just, um, I, this might have been in the memo and I'm forgetting, but um, were these all, all come through Troon or were these things that you've identified on your own? Yes, so um, yes, we, we were compared the new policies with the old policies and also with the resolution to make sure they were all in alignment. Okay, I just caught one um, word that I think is, it's intended to be an adverb. It's towards the end uh, section, release of resident students, B, section B. It says to encourage continuity of education, the participating districts strong discourage school year transfers. I think that should be strongly or, or should maybe. I, I believe you're correct, it should be strongly. We can make that revision. That's all I've caught. <clears throat> all right. And then also we are bringing back for you for second reading the policies referencing student discipline that we've covered um, at the last executive committee meeting as well as the discussion items at the board last board meeting. And uh, that is just the series of taking our student discipline which was previously one policy and replacing it with a number of breakout policies. And the headlines. I'm sorry? And the headlines policy. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Also, second reading the headlines policy. All right. Again, which was discussed at the last board. <laughs> right. And made me itch. Yeah. I think we all, we're all trying to forget the headlines. All right. Tuberculosis. <laughs> A word any, I never knew. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, all right. And any questions on those policies? Nope. All right. Then they'll be placed on the agenda as well. Um, review of June 12th Board of Education agenda to find Dr. Van Wagner. Okay, so uh, for our agenda, we have our call to order, um, our public comment, uh, and uh, procedural items um, with that. Um, uh, we do have uh, for this month, um, we do have our um, our uh, different um, presentation for our uh, different uh, recommendation or I'm sorry recognitions um, so we'll have that as well um, let me hold on one second here I'm fine then here we go and then we have a public hearing uh, for sex education curriculum. Um, so again, a part of this, this did, uh, was presented to our uh, committee, our curriculum committee. Uh, under state law, we have to have two public hearings and they have to be over two different board meetings. So uh, this will be our first public hearing um, on that. And again, at the presentation, it was shown the changes in the curriculum and also any uh, updates that are there uh, are, are available. Uh, they can contact our curriculum office or Dan McGee, who's our uh, state coordinator for that program. And so uh, we will have our first reading with that. Um, we will have our pro public hearing for budget as well. This is a little different. We've decided to get uh, do all of our public hearings up front. Uh, that way, if there is anybody that you know needed to leave, that they have the opportunity for the sex education public hearing, um, the public hearing for the budget, then we will have our regular public comment. 
Uh, we will have our superintendent's report with legislative update district highlights and our required state benchmark assessment reporting that also uh, was done in curriculum committee this month. We'll have all of our committee report outs. Uh, we have all of our consent agenda, um, which all of those items uh, that are there, the purchases, capital projects, curriculum, food service, technology, and VPA equipment was all covered as well in finance and forwarded to the board. Um, uh, we also from there, uh, we'll have discussion. We'll have a second VPAA presentation, school safety update. We will have the resolution to amend our 2223 budget, resolution to certify our tax levy, resolution to approve the original 2324 operating budgets for this uh, uh, next year, um, and then board policy. We will have those second readings as discussed. Our second public, we will go into closed session for the purposes of. Uh, discussing discussing negotiations with collective bargaining agreements um, but we do have some anticipated um, discussion uh, uh, as well coming out of that closed session uh, and then closing remarks of board members and adjourn that is the agenda for the board meeting all right any questions looks good to me and then uh, moving on to information items, HR, deferring to Connie Taylor. Yeah, so just a few. Um, we're at that time of year where we really ramp up in the Human Resources Office in terms of recruitment of staff for next school year. We uh, go through a process here, I'm sure you're aware, it's called mission-based budgeting, where we sit down with each of the buildings looking at their staffing le levels, projected enrollment. Um, and so we have completed that process and identified those staff that where we have vacancies and also buildings where perhaps due to enrollment, we would call them surplus or individuals above what would be our necessary staffing levels. So at this point, we're very pleased to share that we're able to find placements for all of our staff members who were potentially displaced from their current assignments and new assignments. And we're monitoring enrollment and we'll continue to do that throughout the summer. Um, I also included on here a little bit further down some of our recruitment efforts. Those continue to be ongoing for all of our groups. Uh, for those of you who were able to attend yesterday and um, honor some of our retirees, we're happy for those individuals <laughs> leaving, but we're also losing some bus drivers and some of our other critical shortage areas, which means we need to continue to identify new uh, talented staff to replace them. And so we work really closely with the marketing department um, on on all sorts of advertisements and we really amped that up this past school year when we were facing the significant shortages of bus drivers and we did see you know some return on that investment we were able to add some additional drivers to our ranks and we'll continue with that push over the summer um, continuing with our sign on and referral bonuses programs participation in multiple job fair opportunities and also working with the marketing um, and communications department and they're kind of taking things on the road the bus that travels around HR is going to be part of that initiative to put out some of our job openings and talk to, to individuals and we continue to offer um, our open interviews here in our building and are still seeing mm -hmm. some candidates coming in through those so we're very fortunate um, from all levels to have great candidates but we're still looking for more so if there's individuals please check our job postings we have multiple openings across many classifications of staff I wanted to give you an update on the principal search. I'd indicated on the agenda the elementary principal search, but since we last spoke, we also have the West Middle School vacancy that has been posted. So we have completed our second rounds of interviews for the Eastern Elementary position and hope to be making a recommendation to you very shortly. Um, today, we have our first round of interviews with our Montessori candidates for that principal position, and we are looking to close the posting for West Middle School here very shortly and move forward with that process. So really hoping that by um, mid to late June, we'll be able to announce the selected or recommended recommended candidates for those positions for you. And again, we're, we're pleased with the, the candidate pool that those vacancies have generated for you. <laughs> and then uh, Dr. Van Wagner referenced, but um, just want to do a huge uh, shout out to our association leadership and to um, Assistant Superintendent Christine Thomas-Hill uh, for the meet and confer conversations that have occurred 
occurred up to this point. They have been very collaborative and very productive, um, and we're pleased to be bringing to you some recommendations to discuss in closed session when we meet. I wanted to do a particular um, recognition to Mike Livingood, who has served as the TCEA president um, for the last several years. He's completed his term and sadly has indicated that he had not rerun for that position. They have identified a new uh, new president, Chandra Fleece, who I'm looking forward to working with, but I just wanted to acknowledge what a pleasure it has been uh, to work with Mike Livingood. He is an extraordinarily collaborative leader uh, for his group. He's a very sound voice for their needs and um, and I will miss working with him uh, moving forward. It seems quick. <laughs> it was two years, yeah. <laughs> But he's looking forward, he loves being a teacher, looking forward to yep. putting focus back into the classroom. And I can certainly appreciate that, but selfishly, we'll, we'll miss That's his right. leadership. And selfishly, I'm hoping my daughter gets him next year in seventh grade. Oh. Oh, <laughs> so there's benefits to that too. Are there any other questions for human resources um, that I can ask? I just, I just wanted to ask about the um, searches and the process for the elementary principals. I know we got a couple emails from parents who are seeking um, participation in that, I think particularly with the Montessori. What is TCAP's practice? Certainly. So um, typically what we will do in our initial rounds of interviews is that we will include members of the staff. And in the past, if individuals have, have suggested a, a parent participate, we've also invited those. So for Montessori, we did invite a parent representative and we'll have one on the team um, this afternoon. Mm -hmm. But just to go over the overall process, typically what we do is we will um, screen interview, and those come out of the Human Resources Department. Typically those are virtual interviews uh, to identify candidates to move forward. Um, and then at that point, we would invite members of the team, um, other administrative groups, union leadership to be part of the initial in-person interview um, before moving those candidates through. And all before this happens, we do meet with the staff um, and other constituent groups to identify a profile of what they would like to see in their next leader. So as we design interview questions and we select candidates to move forward, we want to see if we can have those who meet the most identified criteria by those who are closest to and we working closest with the, the hired individual. Are we getting, um, for the Montessori position, do, do the candidates have Montessori experience? experience. So um, yes and no. Um, so when I met with that team, they uh, at the Montessori, they had a couple of things that were at the top of their list, right? So obviously, as you can imagine, strong leadership background or administrative background was one. Um, and the other was experience with Montessori. And the third would be someone who with experience of working for those K to eight age groups because of the age span in that building. So you throw all those together into one candidate. We, we call those our unicorn candidates. They're very difficult uh, to identify. And I think Dr. Van Wagner sort of identified why that is. There are very few public Montessori programs throughout the entire country. So if you look at that, the candidate pool of people that with previous administrative experience in those programs, that pool is also al already extraordinarily shallow. So our pool, we do have um, a candidate with Montessori experience, and we have a candidate with strong administrative experience, and another candidate with administrative experience in a K-8 level. So we were not able to, even with extending the posting, find someone that checked all of the boxes for, the, for those, but I do think that the three individuals that we're going to talk to today all bring a very strong skill set to the position and the ability to learn in those areas where they may not necessarily come into the position with. <clears throat> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No. Okay. Thank you. All right, moving on to communications update. Phone to Ginger Smith. Thank you. Yeah, we have quite a few things to update you on this morning. Uh, starting with advertising, we do have a new campaign running with Family Fair. We um, are going with the Family Fair located over in Gran, and each of their Checkout lanes have a little TV monitor, and uh, TCAPS has a continuous cycle of an ad running on that uh, TV monitor. And so we can change that ad up four times per year. So right now we have one going just for a basic enrollment advertisement for the district with the hope that uh, it, it, at the next cycle we'll already be in session for the 23-24 year, and at that point we can 
look to switching that over to an employment ad and then again in January switching it back to enrollment. So it, it'll be interesting to see if we have any new uh, rate of return on, on that initiative uh, since that is a new opportunity for Family Fair and for us. So also coming soon we are uh, about to push out some yummer, summer yard signs for families who are willing to put a little uh, yard sign uh, promoting their elementary building in their yard and then some that will be basic yard signs for just TCAPs. So we will um, push those out before the school is dismissed to send home with some families who have been identified and are willing to do so. Uh, we also have a new initiative going forward with baby packet uh, inserts right now for Munson Hospital. Um, it is just a card right now that is front and back that goes to uh, every expecting family. And uh, the idea is that we will also add with that a uh, TCAP, burp cloth, or bib. And that is an initiative that is being a collaborative work with Rotary uh, Sunrise Group. And uh, so they have a lot of initiatives that they work through with the Dolly Parton Book Club and uh, other, some other local Born to Read initiatives. And so we're excited to be able to be a part of that initiative and get some information out on some of our earliest programming needs, including our uh, special education for early childhood, our preschool programming, and our uh, toddler through um, kindergarten Montessori program. So that's kind of a fun new initiative that we are uh, starting. Uh, we did just kick off yesterday our second year campaign of Moms, Dads, and Grads. Last year we did this on Facebook with great success. And so we started it again last night with our first kickoff. And uh, overnight I did have a few responses from families, one including four generations of TCAP grads. So it's fun to see those come in and with all the pictures. So we expect to have a successful campaign surrounding graduation again this year on that. Um, I did want to touch on some advertising that we've been doing with the uh, surveys that have been going out for the pre-bond. We have continuously been pushing that out through Facebook posts, both on our district site and on our uh, building to building sites. And so we are continuing to do that. We have some scheduled posts yet coming up over the next um, month, or not even month, the next few weeks Two until weeks, the yeah. survey closes. <laughs> I guess we're actually in June now, which is kind of scary. So we uh, do have uh, that information also coming out in the next June letter. It was just in the May June letter and now in our uh, June letter, June newsletter, I'm sorry, coming out as well. And a reminder is also going into the middle school and high school building newsletters to remind families that we have our community and student surveys available for them to participate in through uh, June 15. So we do have a total of 1,461 uh, respondents at this point. Of that, 732 are community members, 276 staff members, and 453 are students. So we will continue to push that out and hopefully see a little more uh, submissions on that. That is excellent. We're getting there. Thank you so much for promoting this because that, that means a lot to us as on the board, I think, to have that the confidence of that much community participation. Yeah, yeah, and it's continuing to grow, so we'll keep an eye on it. Excellent, thank you. As for summer outreach, we do have our Sunshine Bus moving along great. As a reminder, this is an in a new initiative that we have not yet done, and this is with the Father Fred Foundation. And so we now have our schedule and our fun little posters. So June 21 through September 1, without uh, the week of July 4, we will not have service that week. But Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, we will have um, service from Traverse Heights out to Acme on Wednesdays. Thursdays, we will be at Meadow Lanes, Blair Elementary, and then Interlochen Plaza. And on Fridays, we will visit Kings Court, Trade Winds Terrace, and Silver Shores uh, Mobile Home Park. So those are our designated stops, and we're also 
uh, reaching out to specific families to ensure if they cannot find access to those locations that they let us know. We're also working with Northwest Education to ensure that some of their summer programming that has buses, that those buses do connect with our bus and doing kind of like a, a, a swap of uh, food products that will be going to those families as well. So we're getting some really good uh, feedback from some of our community partners and uh, hope that we will have a successful run with that. We're initiating the program with 350 meals uh, per, per week and uh, will adjust as needed. And then we are also putting on the bus a lot of um, health and beauty aids, supplies, first aid, all of that good stuff, personal hygiene products. So um, in terms of other programs that we promote in the summertime, we do have uh, completely filled our Summer Explorers Club. And that is at capacity of eight sessions at 144 children per session. So that's great to see that that has filled. And then Summer Academy, which is our grades nine through 12 uh, credit recovery or for students who are seeking to fulfill some of their academic requirements in the summertime. Uh, that enrollment is still going on, so we do not have numbers on that. They do continue to enroll throughout the remainder of the school year. So we're a little early on that initiative. Uh, and then finally, we do have our Montessori ribbon cutting, and we've been doing a lot of push on that as well. We did push out um, invitations electronically and uh, we also have a ticker ad running right pre, uh, June 6th that will be in the ticker and through our newsletters and um, Facebook posts. So again, that event is June 6th at four o'clock and that is open for the community to participate in the ribbon cutting event and also be available to mm -hmm. tour and uh, attend for the open house of that event. So we will have a lot of students present and helping us out with that event. So it should be a great time. That's all I have. Awesome. Thank Thanks, you. lots of updates. I have one question. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> do, you, do you have one? No, go ahead. Oh, so about Summer Academy. I know as a parent, I got one notification maybe a month ago that that was open, but I think, um, I'm just wondering what the outreach is for students because it is such a great opportunity for kids to make up credits or to advance. Um, Particularly Most with the electives. of that initiative yeah. is done through the counseling office. Mm -hmm. um, I could ask and find out what, what their rate of return has been on some of their initiatives. Uh, but in terms of directly reaching the students, that has been done at the building level. Thank you. I'll take a TCAP's yard sign. Great. <laughs> you have those coming out. I, will. I was thinking the same up. thing. Yeah. If the kids are bringing them home from school, they can't be that big. Well, it's a typical yard sign yeah says. and so and we've been working with the parents so hopefully the parents well, yeah i'm hoping we're not having them go on if you have buses. some extras here i'm sure we'll be by the building to pick I, them up i will certainly <laughs> send you home with okay. one when they come in thank you <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> step it in <laughs> yeah and the stakes <laughs> right yeah so we'll, okay. we'll try to keep those off the buses <laughs> great all right thank you any other questions all good all right, so moving on to other items, are there any other items? All right, hearing none, then the next uh, board meeting is Thursday, June 20, or next board executive committee meeting is Thursday, June 29th at 9 a.m. in this room. With that, we are adjourned. Thanks. Thank you.